All right, today I'm going to be talking about the importance of having a website or blog to tell the story of your photographs. Stay tuned and we'll talk about it. All right, hello and welcome back everyone. Eric Marks here, FindingMiddleEarth.com. And today we're gonna to talk about the uh, website or blog for your photography. So I cannot tell you how many emails I've gotten probably over the past year uh, that I have not been very good at giving you guys a video response about this. I can't believe, uh, just all the emails and messages have been about my website or my blog. I've gotten messages about like, how did I build it? What service I use? Um, you know, can I build a website for you? Um, so I wanna stop first and just say, whatever I say about my website, my recommendations, I'm not sponsored by anybody. I know like 99% of the photographers on YouTube start videos like this with, Squarespace is a beautiful place to build your website and if you click on my link right here, it'll take you to a 10% discount code. And I, that, I'm not doing that, okay? If you, you use Squarespace, that's cool. I'm sure Squarespace, Squarespace is very cool and good and easy. Um, I use WordPress as a foundation for my website. My website is a uh, is a mixture of things. It's a it has a lot of custom CSS on the back end that I've written, and then it, it's also kind of like half CSS and half theme builder. Um, but it's not just a template that you can just click on and add and drag and drop stuff. So it, mine's not that simple. Okay, so I, I don't want to lie to you and just say yeah, go to Squarespace and type in coupon code Eric and everything will just be magic. Um, I use WordPress as a foundation for my website because uh, there's kind of unlimited things you can do to your website with plugins, okay? Squarespace and a lot of other services like uh, Wix and uh, a couple other ones, I can't think of the names, um, they don't allow you know, a lot of custom uh, third-party plugins to solve your issues. If you wanna do something cool or extra on your website, they don't allow um, third-party uh, developers to you know basically make stuff for your website, which which is good and bad. Okay, it's, it's there's simple ways and there's more complicated ways of doing things. That's that's fine. Uh, I just want to talk about um, so just kind of answer the questions that I've gotten over the past couple of years. So number one, I use WordPress as kind of a foundation. The reason I do it, the biggest reason is for SEO. If you don't know what that means, it stands for search engine optimization. There's tons of ways, almost unlimited ways, to make sure that my website is very search engine friendly so that when people type anything remotely close to me in on Google, that I'm always trying to help my website you know, become a top search. If you type in like FME Eric or Finding Middle Earth Eric or Eric Marks or something, you know, I wanna make sure that I come up. Um, and so WordPress is very good about adding, you can add a lot of backend things to WordPress and to your, to your website through plugins or a lot of third party services out there that'll help your website basically be found much easier, which if you're a wedding photographer or a portrait photographer or something like that, that's huge. So uh, would I recommend WordPress for everybody? Um, yes, I would because I think it's the most search engine friendly and the most uh, versatile, even though it's not the most simple. So keep that in mind. Um, I don't, I'm not saying it's for everybody, but I would recommend it to almost every photographer I can think of because of the unlimited options. Um, okay, so I just want to give you guys kind of a walkthrough of my website because a lot of the, the second half of questions that I've gotten is, you know, what should my website look like? I'm building it and I don't know if I should, you know, if I, if I should have a blog or what. So let, let me just clarify some things. So um, I think the blog is probably the most important piece to any photographer's website, whether you're portrait, wedding, whatever, because being a photographer is not just about going around pointing this at stuff, taking the shot, and then delivering it to clients or you know, posting it on Facebook or whatever. Um, this is just a portion of what we do, okay? Remember, we're storytellers, right? We're storytellers, so this is just half of the game. We're going out there and we're capturing the image, but we still have to tell the story. And so a lot of people will say, oh, well, my photograph does that for me. My photo tells the story. Um, that's fine. That, that, you know, that, that's great. Photos do tell stories for sure and they keep people guessing, but people love connecting with you on a personal level as to what you were feeling and why you chose to take that specific photograph. And blogs are wonderful platforms for us as artists and creatives and photographers to communicate with our viewers and our fans and people that love to, to look at our work. It's kind of like, I would almost think it's our duty to have a, a free blog for people to come and read and 
and us give them back, you know, because they're being so friendly and nice and sharing our work and viewing it all the time, and they go through their Facebook newsfeed and share it with friends and stuff, it's kind of our duty to give them the story behind it. And I find it quite fun. It's, but I will tell you this, having a blog is one of the most challenging things you'll ever do because finding time to write the posts is very hard, I will tell you, but I still have to find time to do it. Another great thing about uh, WordPress and a lot of websites will do this is that you can schedule posts. You can kind of write posts, you know, like 10 or 15 posts on a day and then schedule them to drop on, on different days. Um, however, I still, I very rarely do that. I like to just blog whatever comes to my mind on the day so that it's just kind of more personal and more organic. Anyway, so let's, let's take a look at my website and it, I'll tell you what I think makes a good photography website because I've been through my fair share of websites and website services, including Squarespace and a lot of other ones I've tried. And this is the website that I've had now for a couple of years and I love it. I, I love you know the, the back end of it. It's very, uh, I, I have a workflow. It's kind of like editing a photo. I have a workflow. When I, when I post a blog post, I know that I go here and that I click this button and that I have this kind of layout for the website and I add, you know, I know the specific dimensions of my featured image that I want to add and attach to the blog post. So uh, let's take a look at my site here. Okay, so here we are on the laptop and I'm just on google.com right now because I want to show you guys just, you know, from a new visitor's point of view what my website looks like when it loads. So findingmiddleearth.com. And there we go. So here's the home page. So notice something. Right when my home page loads, you see photos. You see large photos. And that's very important because that's showcasing my work, right? I'm a photographer. I don't want the first thing people to see, you know, is a big photo of me or, you know, some some huge thing of text. I want them to see my work. And then overlaid over my work not distracting, by the way, it's just white and black and simple. It's not insanely colorful. Overlaid over the photos are what I would call a CTA, which is a call to action. And what that means is I have an immediate call to action to explain to people right off the bat before they ever do anything on my website. It explains what I'm about, right? The first thing, it, want to learn photography? View Eric's tutorials. And you can click the tutorials button and boom, it takes them right over to my store if they want to see what I'm about. I can do portfolio critiques. I have an, a photographer's apprentice bundle. They can see this one's five stars and this one's five stars. You can read the reviews. And so they can see what I'm about. And then they, if they want to go back to the home page and read the blog, um, there's an arrow here indicating that they can scroll down or they can just click. If you click the arrow, it'll just do its own thing. And here we go, right into the blog. They don't have to do any work. They don't have to click something over here that says blog. It just scrolls right down into the blog. I think that's probably the most useful thing if you're very centered around the blog because uh, the blog essentially is your home page. So they don't have to find it in some kind of sub menu. So they scroll right down and right away I have a couple of little ads to my own personal stuff so they can see the organize your photos tutorial. The reason why I have that one on the home page is because that's the most asked question typically with new photographers is I'm getting all these new photos and I'm taking hundreds and hundreds and I don't know what to do with them. And so I have this to help people. And then of course people like to see my landscape photography vlog, which of course you can all see for free on my YouTube channel here. Um, and so they can click right into that. And so right here, they have big um, featured images to the blog. And I think that's very important. You don't want tiny little thumbnails. You want them to, to you want to kind of smack them in the face, you know, what, what the blog post is going to be about. So I have big bold letters, XT2 versus D810 ISO showdown. They can see it right there. They scroll down, same thing, Fuji XT2 vlog eight. And then they can read the big, big bold titles. I'm all about big, bold, simple font and text because I, I want it to be simple and easy for people to read. And then of course I have a sidebar all along the right here, okay? And you don't have to have that. That took me hours and hours of designing the graphics myself for this kind of stuff, but it, I think it really adds a bit of personal touch because I don't have, I didn't want to just flood my sidebar with a bunch of Google ads and AdSense stuff. I want it to be stuff that's gonna you know, directly connect to me and help people. I mean, it's, it's all about me. It's not about you know, Google ads and tracking their Google searches. I want it to be about you know, connecting with me, the whole reason why they came to my website. So they can connect with me on social media. There's a nice welcome video I have for my viewers. They can join my newsletter to stay up to date. There's Disney stuff they can look at. There's all my tutorials here again. Okay, my Instagram feed. Um, it's just stuff for people to be able to connect with me 
on more of a personal level. That's what your website and your blog should be. It should be a direct connection to you as a person, right? Who are, who are you going to portray yourself as on your website? And that's what your website and blog should be about. It should be the direct connection, boom, for you to meet your fans and your viewers on a personal level um, without actually having to meet them, right? They can just read your blog posts and kind of understand who you are. Um, so yeah, you just keep scroll, scrolling all the way down. You can see these blog posts and, and anytime you want to click on one, you can click the featured image or you can click the read more button. A lot of blogs I see have this little read more button because it's kind of tiny and, and they don't allow you to click the featured images to enter the blog post. You can only click the little, uh, read more button. So make sure that if you do get, have a blog that people can click into the images to visit the post. So for example, if I click on that, boom right into the blog post and you can see they can start reading they can download the raw file so i make it as try to make it as personal as possible they can comment on each and every uh, blog post there's other posts that they might like that i suggest for them to read and they can click to it right from there so they just click the little thumbnail and boom they're right into the next blog post here okay same thing they can just keep clicking through if they like disney world they can click this one they can just perpetually keep clicking through to other posts they might like and that's what you want as a photographer is that as people dive further into your site you want the, the conversion rate to just keep going and building right you want people to make impressions on things on your website and just and, and click and click and click and then convert them over to a returning visitor uh, on your website so um, yeah, and so let's go back home for a second. So another p important thing is to have a very easy to read and big bold logo too. So boom, finding Middle Earth right here. There's a camera with a little hiker in the, in the camera, a little silhouette. And so they can tell I'm probably a photographer that likes to explore, right? That's, that's what this logo and the name is all about. So um, again, simple, easy to read. Um, over here, my menu, you can read about me. You can go to About Eric. Okay, there's a little graphic of me. That way, the second they go to meet Eric, they literally do get to see exactly who they're dealing with here. Uh, it's not the prettiest of faces, but they get to see it all the same. And they can read a little bit about me and my background, the basics, my age, where I'm from, some of my hobbies. It's all, again, it's just, I hate to be repetitive, but it's, it's all about being personal and honest and organic with your viewers. So cool stuff. You can go to my prints, free videos, licensing if people want to license my photos. Uh, I have a lot of Disney stuff on my website, so people can actually read the Disney story. And I have a couple of Walt Disney quotes that pop up in the shape of Mickey ears. So, you know, very, which is very friendly on the eyes, you know, it makes people want to keep reading. And then, of course, I have a little bit about me and Disney and how I got involved with Disney and why I love it so much. And then you can see all, you can always see a countdown of when I'm going to be in Disney next, because I don't think there has even been a time in the past six or seven years where I don't have my next Disney trip planned. There's always a time where I have a trip planned, like even by the time we get back from one Disney trip, another one is planned. So you'll always be able to pretty much see a countdown of when I'm going to be back in Disney World. Um, and I'm currently working right now, by the way, uh, to, to um, run some workshops in Disney World. So stay tuned on that because that might even be this year. Uh, I haven't released any info on that yet. That's not a thing. You can't, you know, there's, it's not official yet, but uh, just to, to put a little bug in your ear, I might be doing some, some photography workshops in Disney World um, and that would be killer if we could pull that off. So, uh, of course, just the rest of the Disney page has some, my Disney portfolio, my portraits around the world project, some theme park photo tips. You always, you know, you, just, you want everything to be related, simple to read, very fluid website. Um, my portfolio, of course, you, you can break it up into view all the Disney project. Um, there's so many people that break up their portfolio into like wildlife and portraits, black and white, water, fall, you know, you know, winter, all this stuff. I like to just kind of do a view all so they can just keep scrolling through all the photos. I don't think people care so much about categorizing them unless it's a special project, right? So my Disney World is kind of my specialty photos. So that's why I kind of separated that one. So you can do a view all and view everything, or you can specifically go, let's click on it here, you can specifically go to my Smug Mug portfolio and just narrow down to my best Disney work here. And I think that's important. Uh, because when you do specialty stuff, you want to kind of, you know, separate it and, and center some focus around it. So, yeah, you can scroll through my Disney work. Um, and then, of course, from here, you can go back to the blog or to the homepage of the portfolio. So if we just shoot back to the blog, it goes right back super quick. 
Um, and that's the last thing before I wrap this up is make sure your website is fast. Whoever you choose to host your servers with, um, you know, don't skimp out on some $2 a month server plan. The biggest uh, turnoff when, when new viewers come to your site is if it takes more than like a second to a second and a half, uh, maybe two seconds to load the web page, they just move on to the next one. Uh, it's, it sucks, it really does, it, it's a sucky thing. But in this world of you know fast-paced life that people live, that's just that's how people do things. You know, if you're if if it takes two, three, four, five seconds to each page to load, uh, people move on. They'll go on to the next photographer's site. They don't have time. They don't want to have time to just sit there and wait for stuff to load. They want to have content ready immediately, right on their mobile device, and boom. So. Um, yeah, those are just some things to think about. Okay, feel free to look at my website and, and you know study how I have mine set up. Uh, ask me any questions, fill out my contact form or shoot me an email, comment below. Uh, I'm happy to tell you guys anything else about my website. I don't have any secrets. Um, so if you guys want to know, you know I, uh, what servers I use or whatever, any other kind of geeky stuff, or if you want me to help you, you know, recommend a way to lay out your site, or even if you want me to, you know, just shoot me your website and I can go critique it. There's a, a I actually have a product for your portfolio. If you go back to my store here, uh, keep, keep in mind, I have a product for, it's on sale right now for $50 and I'll do a full critique of your photography portfolio. And if that portfolio was on your website, then I'll critique that as well. Um, so yeah, just, you know, use me as a resource. If I'm, I love helping people out with this stuff. So um, I, I get so many questions about my website because I don't have the standard Squarespace, you know, a million thumbnails on the homepage thing. I think that Squarespace websites look very Squarespace-y. <laughs> me and my friend Joseph actually talked about that before. Uh, it's not a word. Squarespace-y isn't a word, but I think they all kind of look the same. And so when people come to my website, I want them to just be like, oh, wow, that, that looks very different than what I've seen before. And don't take this video, please don't take this video as a hit against Squarespace. It just didn't work out for me and all the things that I needed, okay? It's a very, very capable platform. Uh, it's very simple, very, very innovative. Okay, I've used it before. I started out on Squarespace to see if I liked it. And Squarespace has wonderful things. I'm sure they're wonderful people. I've had to use their customer support before when I started out my website and they were super quick and super easy and you know to, to work with. They're, so just don't take this as a hit against Squarespace. They're a wonderful company and they, they do make very beautiful websites and they make it very easy for people to build them. Um, I just went with this because I needed different things and different add-ons to the back end of my site. So uh, I hope you, some of you guys learned something from this. And uh, again, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. If you would like to stay up to date on all of my latest photography videos and adventures, click the big subscribe button below. And if you would like to find out more about me and how to become a great photographer, visit my website at findingmiddleearth.com.